Well, um, no one's probably going to see that because I think the active screen was on me. But regardless, we, we started to talk about a few items. And there's one that's at the forefront of my mind because I um, heard about some unusual seismic activity yesterday. And right before this, I had an opportunity to listen to Ben Davidson kind of put his spin on that uh, earthquake in the New York, oh, the one, New York the one area. one in Thailand? No, no. New York. Oh, the New York quake. Yeah. I, to me, when I see them in other parts of the United States, other than along the West Coast, they're unusual. So when I've heard about them in Oklahoma... And um, I've heard about them in Virginia before. Even he went back through what records we do have about that type of information and the uh, intensity of it and its location. That was historic. It shook Manhattan. So that's never happened. What I'm pointing out is that this activity is on the rise and it's starting to express itself in areas where it had not before. He showed an image there of what people characterized as a lightning strike hitting the Statue of Liberty. And what he explained was that was not a lightning strike. That was an expression from the ground. That was a ground up lightning expression of energy that needed to express. And that's where it took place. It was pretty yeah, remarkable. Enough. Yeah, that's called that's called an electrical discharge. Um, yeah, it has to go, it has to go two ways. It's part of the balance process. That it's best looked up as a dipole dipole electromagnetic relationship, and we find that with the sun and the Earth, and the other yes. planets. The other planets have it as well. But you know, we're not that far away from the sun compared to most of the planets. Believe it or not, it's surprising that we could be as close as we are and have the the abundance of life that we do yeah ben uh ben pegged it god bless him uh yes there's a, lot of, there's a lot of reasons that were not discussed because ben has an agenda and he only has so much time uh let me just remind your listeners if anyone is curious about the the new york earthquake this is speaking strictly as a scientist with my background uh there is a lot of iron underneath New York. See, the reason Manhattan is such a successful place to build buildings is that there is a solid two and a half miles of granite that runs straight under Manhattan towards the center of the earth. Now, it's not that very far because there's, you know, there's crustal zones on the planet that are only a quarter mile thick. And we've seen that as, as far as like Iceland. And then there's areas of the planet that are eight miles thick or 20 miles thick. So the, the crust is, you know, varied in thickness across the entire planet, according to the dispersion of different types of uh, mineralogy on the surface. But yeah, so there's also uh, an electrical attraction. So when we think about uh, solar uh, blot echoes, and when we think about uh, pulses of highly charged particles that come in the form of a solar wave, then when they impact the planet, this could be on the antipode of New York. So you'll get a solar discharge on the exact opposite side of New York. Well, because of the content of the iron in that granite, uh, it's going to pull and it'll pull and bounce back and it'll reverberate different electromagnetic fields that are just beyond uh, des description. And New York had a shudder. Now, this is, you know, relative to the exciting change that the sun is going through and the guy is going through. We can expect a lot more of it. I would be wise to tune in to Dutch since and find out what the Dutchman has to say about the earthquake. Yeah, if anybody has, he'll just validate an observation he made before. You know, he's been watching this phenomenon long enough and connecting the dots so that he saw these pre-seismic signals, which is what Ben was referring to when he talked about the lightning expression from the um, 
um, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that was a pre-seismic sign that should have been recognized because you know a day or so after that was when the earthquake actually expressed itself. Well, both Ben and Dutch Sense, who in my mind is an expert in this area, uh, the tools that he uses to show you what's going on, and there's clearly where you can see that dipole effect you're referring to. Um, this guy has been studying this for so long, he has a model that he's created, some mind algorithm that he understands what the signs are for this seismic activity, and he'll be like everybody else that's watching this sun um influence coming our way uh it's on the freaking rise and we're not out of solar maximum yet no we we won't be out of solar maximum for quite some time uh we're six years into it and typically uh gsm uh whether it's a minimum or a maximum because there's no distinction we just have to follow the cycles uh, yes. a, a grand solar minimum or a grand solar maximum, which is what we're in right now, will typically last between 10 and a half to 12 years. Yeah. And that number 12 keeps coming up in the cycle of behavior. And we'll look, we can multiply that to 2,400. And then you start looking at 2,500, which is, you know, a good amount of time to pass for every Carrington event to flash off. So then you get. We're you, overdue. We, All the markers tell us we're overdue. We are overdue. Those of us that are aware of the shift know it can happen tomorrow just as as likely as you know 10 years from now. All we're talking about is we're aware of it and we're just preparing ourselves. Well, and there was a while where you and I thought that our job was to help everybody else and that realization that we should be tending to our own flame really... Uh, it got hammered home like two months ago. Well, and so that's yeah. why our expressions have been different. You and I, you and I started talking about the dissimulation of the facts that we were given. You see, because it isn't a fairy tale or some sort of myth. It's the facts. These are the facts. It's like if you go and get a job for the FBI, you're gonna after you know your training and you become an officer, you're gonna go into the briefing room and your sergeant in charge of you, the a special agent in charge of you is going to say, hey, these are the facts. And so that doesn't mean you're self-promoting. It's I was told this by Kim Jim to share with humanity. And in in relation to that, he would give me gifts. He would release my emotional burden so that I felt good every day. And then he would help me access higher regions of higher cognition in my mind so that I could finally grasp higher mathematics because it took my entire life. And as you know, I was an F student in mathematics all the way up into junior college where I gracefully etched myself up to D minus. <laughs> so it wasn't until Fresno State and then higher university. And the reason I don't tell people about my university training role and I have a successful petition with the National Registry of Graduates to have my name there, but in silence. And it'll show a space for my graduation date and my, and my grade level, but my name won't be there. And it took me a year to get that. Uh, and the reason was some of the people that were at a gig that you and I did together in Shasta had reached out to my university and then my university came back and complained to me. They said, if you want this uh, postgraduate doctoral job, then you're going to have to tell your friends in the UFO community to stop harassing us about you. And so that's why I don't talk about my university because there's a lot of wackos out in the community and you know, it's just the way it is. If you're, if you're in the hospital union or if you work in the railway union and you're a train conductor or a, boxcar man there's going to be wackos at work there unfortunately the one percenters out there belong to every group <laughs> so i i was certainly under attack at my university and, and it was funny too because i told them that the postgraduate or uh work that they had offered wasn't the class that i wanted and uh if i could find the money i would move to heidelberg to germany and i would go check in uh and take their phd program because 
Heidelberg right now is working on a new type of science with uh, cosmology and mathematics that is more esoteric in sounding or in nature than typical higher mathematics, Lucasian chair, Cambridge, Oxford, MIT style mathematics tutoring. Heidelberg right now is working on uh, an acceptance program of validating the universe by what you see and feel rather than what you suppose. And it's going to be groundbreaking when the program's released. And I'm, I'm only savvy to this private information about where their mathematics department is going because a very dear friend of mine is just been given a teaching job there. So what I want to do is get over to Germany in a couple of years and uh, get my my postgrad in for two years of lab work. And uh, apparently they're using things like meditation and astral projection to understand higher mathematics. So it's no surprise. And this is interesting because when Weimer told me about the four fundamental components of reality, time, light, gravity, and sound, he had told me that the access point will come to me after I understand what the relationship between the four is and how they are the, the progenitor of the three. So when mankind wanted to brainwash everybody else, they said, this is the grand unified theory. That was started by Einstein, but his original theory was to contact God with his formula. You see, the Einstein equation is actually what I call the God formula. His disciples Enrico Fermi and Robert Julius Oppenheimer and all the physicists that worked at UC Davis at Berkeley and in Cambridge and Oxford, all of his underlings converted his formula into the grand unified theory. But that was matter, energy, and space. So if all of humanity spent the last 80 years studying matter, matter energy, and space, they should have been studying the time, light, gravity, and sound because matter is a result of time, light, gravity, and sound. Space is a result of time, light, gravity, and sound. So is energy. So they're studying sort of like, it's like looking at an animal scat when you're hiking and you see the scat, but you're not too sure what kind of poop it is. So you say, oh, that's a Jagarundi diplodocus bobcatitis. And it's a it's a wolf cat dinosaur bobcat, and that's what that animal is, and it looks like that. Well, you, you can't look at the poop of the universe and tell me what reality is. <laughs> so what what I'm starting to see is some of the some of the top people at Heidelberg are cottoning on to what we've been talking about for three and a half years. And they're not going to say, hey, David, thanks for time, like gravity and sound. But that wasn't that. See, you're not supposed to you're not supposed to want rewards for the gifts that they gave us, Lowell. And that's part no, of because that's part of the we, humility that you and I were discussing before we hit record. And so why don't you go ahead and, and lay it out? They give us more gifts as a result. That's where the re, the realization you and I came to weeks ago was that while we were worrying about helping elevate everybody else, we forgot that there was still stuff coming our way and we either ignored it or we suppressed it in favor of what we thought we were supposed to do. And it, it took a wake up call for both of us to kind of get hit upside the head with an ethereal two by four um, on, we're trying to give you more information. There's more things that we need you to interpret for yourself and then to help others understand, uh, but you're not getting it where you're stuck. So when you were explaining the process um, where these scientific minds are finally opening their ideas up to things beyond what science can prove, right? There's now there's real hope for them to understand the multidimensional parts of things because they don't need a, a 3D hard physical translation of it. They've got to ex just be open to expressions of energy that they're unfamiliar with. Right. So when we received when we received uh, the life change we were given, 
And this is, you know, all of our family members out there that are going through these amazing changes of awareness, right? It doesn't always have to be in a physical change. You don't have to go on board a interstellar conveyance. You don't have to go through a stone to enter Lemuria. And you don't need to ask for project to Venus. All you have to do is be aware of it. And when I said the last time we spoke, I said, it's that the joyful act of seeking the truth, which opens the doorways that you needn't even worry about passing through. When we look for the truth on our own, I believe very sincerely we're more apt to find it on our own. And ending Star Chat and going forward and trying to communicate and transmit healthy thoughts that benefit all of the world and humanity, I find it is easier to access universal uh, one God, one mind, and universal one heart, one flame, one mind. Uh, I'm finding that a lot easier by not seeking information from other people, but just asking my own heart and my third eye and the love of my soul to join into the divine realm of the universe and, and invite the universe in to understand all of its beauty, wonders, and complexity. And so I'm no longer tuning into anybody at all. I don't watch anything anymore because as soon as I admitted to myself that I'm on my own quest 100% of the time, then the universe just was knocking on my door. And so I've opened that door up. So seeking the truth, boy, that puts you right there. It's like inculcating joy in order to raise your vibration to be in one with Gaia. So they gave us this divine gift, and it's really important that we remain humble and not dispense knowledge unless we're asked. I think it's important that people that want to talk to us about what's going on in our lives have to show that kind of curiosity because they can then compare our experience to their own. But I'm learning more and more that the gift of universal knowledge and the connection of all of humankind comes from just asking and it immediately comes because when we ask for super gifts and important gifts we ask with some very deep sincerity and so our soul and our physical body which is connected all you have to do is close your eyes and think about your heart and your love and then speak to the divine universe and say dear divine universe Dear creator of all that is beautiful and all that is loving and filled with light, please come through my door, knock and it shall be opened as I knock and your door is opened unto me. Thank you. And so I believe that that is the way in and it's, it's working for me. And this is something that's been transformational over the last seven days. And I, I just can't describe the deep sense of humility and love I have for everybody and everybody's experience is so, so important. You know, I think that we need to practice in articulating our thoughts and articulating the truth of our experience, but be careful to not let someone else's experience overshadow or overcrowd yours that you're able very much so to walk on this new path of complete awakening because that's where you want to be. And you know when you ask for something and it's real. And so I've been having higher psychic acuity. I was putting out messages last week to all the ambassadors. I know you got yours. Well, Asher called me up, man. He picked up on it. I've been saying this for two years now, ever since I was on Vivian Chauvet's uh, interview when sh she and Jeff Demare interviewed me about my trip. Pardon me. Um, That... What we're doing is not trying to heal others and talk about a fantastic experience. What we're doing 
is we're all coming to the same place as a species because we're all the same. And so we're feeling repercussions. The planet's feeling repercussions. The awakening causes repercussions. They're like vibrational waves that pass through everything. And every time we have a new cosmic consciousness within the family of people who love life, then that produces a, 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 a blast. And so we're getting all these hits and they're coming up like crazy. So going back to the sun, I just like to say that sometimes those negative waves come off the plasma from the sun and be happy as those things happen. But practice your ability to communicate with one another psychically. Guys, I'm telling you, really, this is a great time to hear the thoughts of the people that you love. And I'm hearing thoughts from people that I've communicated with and become friends with through your channel. I'm hearing them now. And they're hearing me. And I can see them smiling at themselves going, yep, David's absolutely correct. Our psychic acuity has increased. This is the gift. Now, some time ago, I went through and, and emailed all of the ambassadors that we were getting an upgrade. And this is the result. This is February a year and a half ago, February a year ago. You, Vivian, uh, I think even Rob Potter got it. Uh, Nathan got it. Uh, I know I sent one to Krista and Raw. And I sent one to Alex Collier, but everybody got it. And I know that, that Nathan sent his to Brad Olson and a few other people. And then um, the upgrade was that now is the time to ask for gifts because we had fully gone into the entrance of Aquarius starting with 2011 and that final shift past the Pisces cusp because the cusp is like a well and the planet goes over it. A lot of the stuff that's bad for humans and bad for the planet gets dropped into the cusp. And then the cusp of astrology recycles those bad things into gifts. Well, then we moved into Aquarius. And now Aquarius, you know, Mercury's in retrograde right now. It's going to come out of retrograde in a while. But this has been happening a lot. And Mercury's been going into retrograde a lot. That's causing a lot of stuff to happen, too. So if we just stay focused on the divine gift of information that's coming to all of us, then we don't have to worry about making sure people know about it. We don't have to worry about talking about it anymore, but only be here for people that go, Hey, did you guys experience this in your transition to a higher place? Because I'm operating from a higher place right now. And it's just, just such a divine gift because now I, have you know, I, I feel like I know what's coming. Uh, I feel like I know that I'm going to meet it and meet whatever event occurs with, you know, a very strong, powerful, brave shield of love and that everything will be good. So we're in a really good space to work on our psychic acuity, support one another with a vibration of love and to send out those thoughts to our family now to hear the voice that we love you. And this is the universal voice of love. This is the God creator love that loves all of life. And this is also the gift that I emailed everybody that when you cast your gaze upon something, whatever you're looking at can be changed by the gaze you cast upon it. For those of us that are starting to feel the enhanced psychic gift, be wary. Remember that our lessons, uh, when we repeat things like, uh, be careful of your thoughts, stay in your lane, don't think bad thoughts at any time, only think good thoughts. This is all good advice, everybody, that, that in order to Master the gifts that you've been given so that you can use them anytime to benefit your health or the health of someone you love. If you want to, if you want to master those gifts, you have to work doubly hard at humility and forgiveness and compassion. And so the divine creator of the universe of all love and light will recognize the sacrifice that you make towards yourself about being really positive and loving all the time. 
the divine universe will see the commitment that we've all made to being loving and to be helpful at all times. And we will be rewarded for this here in this life now. And I'm feeling those gifts coming. I'm feeling great changes coming to all of us that are all very positive. And so there's really nothing else, you know, for me to say about that. But I think the the earthquakes and everything else are actually symptomatic of the souls of human beings that are changing as well, because we're connected to the sun just as we are connected to the earth. We're all electromagnetic beings. How that gets expressed, uh, we're watching. You, for the last few minutes, explained perfectly what environment you set up for yourself. Think about what's taken place and the changes over the last few years and the orbit that was around you then and the influences that were around you then, as opposed to now and the knowledge that you got. Um, when you explain this new aura around you, it's every person that you've described that's active in your field right now vibrates at that same level, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. You drew that energy to yourself now, and now that you understand that power, you can see what power the collective has when there are a bunch of us in the room that think at that level of vibration with all kinds of different gifts. Because again, I want to underscore, none of us were here to master the same things. But once we do and we put all that together, all that energy together, man, we could move mountains by ourselves when we figured out how to do that. Imagine what the collective can do. We're taking back our sovereignty with people that are just coming to this level of awareness about what their contributions are going to be. Well, I laugh well, every time I... I look at some social media posts and I, I wonder what people think. It, this is your contribution to the collective? And a lot of it I see is they're just pushing out somebody else's meme. I mean, what's the point? Well, let me just, you know, I want you to continue on that thought, but let me just tell you that I have already taken back my sovereignty. And many of us have. And all I can say to the the forces of darkness that still think that they're having the party all I can say is watch out because the rest of us have taken it back too. And many more will well, all be we taking had to it do, back. So watch yeah, out. We just had to ignore their white noise because it really didn't have any power of it unless we gave it our attention. When we focus on what we want, the rest of what they would like us to do on their behalf doesn't matter anymore. There is taking back your sovereignty. And I love to listen to my tribe declare it because you only say the word sovereignty when you know that you have it. Thank you very much. I love it being around those people. Ab absolutely. That's a, that's a touching remark and it, it acknowledges the love and the unity of this family. And it acknowledges the, the unbelievable power that we already have. You see, we, spoke about the ancient ones who used to be able to stand in a circle and hold their hands and hum. And all of a sudden the stones of Baalbek would rise and then fall into place. You see, and this is the gift. Keep working on your psychic abilities to communicate love to one another, because when the Carrington event goes off, there will be no telephones, no computers, no cell phones, no satellites. No underground Atlantic cable because it'll melt. So when the Carrington event does occur, and it's going to happen soon, a lot sooner than any Micronova. I'm not concerned about the Micronova because that's not going to have an adverse effect on us. Because our hearts are full of love, we will move at the very same instant forward with Gaia into bliss, into that beautiful, beautiful world where it's only people like us, people who love animals, people who love children people who respect one another and people who are there for each other. And that's such a, a touching thing too. You know, I, I see so much community and community support in this tribe.
in my family here. We're in a beautiful place and they make it beautiful for you and I. And I'd, I'd just like to take a moment to say hello to everybody and tell you how much we care and how much we value your participation in watching Lowell and I have a private conversation because we think of you often and we send you so much love. When Lowell and I meditate, we we have moments where we send you love and we try our, our, our best and indeed communicate to the creator, the divine creator of all love and light who has created time like gravity and sound all at the same time. And this divine creator who creates all life and supports all life we channel that when we meditate and we send that out to everybody. We don't have to meet you. We don't have to touch your hand. We don't have to know what you look like. We just know that you're here and we love you. And we send you that beautiful love, don't we, Lowell? Yes. You know, I was just, I've heard from some new people in the last two weeks and the communication has been lovely, doesn't get it. I heard from um, one I would like to, I'd read it word for word, but I asked her permission about sharing it because it gave me some insight onto sessions I have with people. Now, I, I know that I've been carrying some light codes and I was under the impression that I carry them to share with others, but I really didn't see how that happened. I never really saw myself in a Zoom session, a healing session, or a, I'll take you to this is a Telos Ascension you know, session. And I never did that. There were different levels of energy that I open up for others. And it wasn't until this last session where this lovely child said that very thing. She had recently had a healing session online that she had paid somebody to walk her through. She had also recently had an Ascension to Telos session with somebody recently. And so when she heard about me and was compelled to reach out and book a session, she expected some type of an experience like that. And even during the session, I could tell that she was waiting for something to happen and me to take her through some kind of ceremony. And when that didn't happen, she was left kind of puzzled. Well, later, a few days later, like is my case, um, when it all assimilated, she acknowledged that. She said, I was waiting for something to happen. I was, you know, I was used to these healing sessions. And later, it was only when I could look back at the situation I opened, I could see where energy that I wasn't aware of opened up for me. That's and really I that's have right. wow. a higher perspective of awareness that I got when our session. And I didn't understand what that was at the time, but now I can tell you what it was. And even I needed to hear that. Because I wasn't right. quite sure what people are getting on the other end. So there you have it. Well, you know, that's so funny, too, because this family that have created themselves by joining your site, this this unity that we have. Look, guys, we learn from you. I mean, you know, we get your vibrations. We feel your love and your energy. And we also read what you post. But what Lowell just said about this young lady whether or not she got it or not, had that experience of ascension or that experience of, of higher awakening, you know, that really hit me in the first, fifth, and, and seventh chakra. And that was such a beautiful explanation. You know, the thought of having a higher purpose comes from having a beautiful heart. And so if we think about what we really want in this life, it doesn't have to be anything that's unattainable. We can have everything that we want by being loving and just putting that pure love out. And it's just such a beautiful gift because I want to remind people, not as a teacher or a dispenser of good advice, because that's not my role. I want to remind people that love is the most awesome thing. It is the most awesome force. That, that pervades time, light, gravity, and sound. It is the unique distillation of complete cosmic consciousness. 
There's no greater force in this universe. So access that love. Just fill yourself with love. And then you're just going to go boom. And you're going to connect to everybody all the time and go straight up into that realm of the gods in the celestial cosmic consciousness just by concentrating on being loving and what a joy it is to to be loving all of the time because we don't have to take responsibility for the pain all around us but we can love everyone that's going through their own process of life and send love to that person and it doesn't take any physical energy or time away from us. Isn't that just the most wonderful thing about sending energy is it doesn't make us tired. It doesn't make us exhausted. It's just coming right out of my heart right now. You feeling that rainbow, Paula? She had to bail. I think she's running. Oh, on and off. Well, Uh that's cool. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm getting it from other people and, I think it's clear to my friends to to please stop sending me links because they don't mean anything to me anymore. And everything that I need to attain, I can get from from the divine creator, from God. And you know, you know, that's... I feel so I feel so loved and so so full of beauty by this thought that I just don't need anybody's help. I just that's a wanna, mouthful. I just want to eat here. I just want it to needs be here. to be said. Yes. Yeah. When you finally reach that level of awareness that you really understand that the things that the gifts that you possess now came from within inside myself. Perhaps when I intersected somebody's path, they drew my attention to something I was supposed to pay attention to. But I like you pointed out at the beginning of all of this. We didn't get any of that from somebody else. We are the commanders of our own little ships here. And we just had to take, you know, hold of the helm. We didn't know. We didn't know what we didn't know. We've been in this 3D experiment for so long, understanding duality lessons, that, you know, we failed to be able to look beyond that. So we kind of just stuck ourselves where we were until somebody came along and showed us a different perspective. And all of a sudden it resonated. And when I began to absorb more of that information, I started to drew people that thought that way, circumstances that thought that way. And all of a sudden, a few years later, I see myself at a level of awareness. I don't know how I got here. But in comparison to the people around me, I can see that it's elevated. <laughs> that's that's very um, that's very clear. Um, and you know, it's really interesting how when we get to these higher levels of consciousness, lol, others come into our field. When you say you don't know what you don't know. Isn't it wonderful to be released from the box? Isn't it wonderful to be let out of the cage? I'm free. I'm truly yeah. free because it doesn't. Then you realize that no matter what happens to your body, no matter what happens to you in this reality, you're free. And so well, there was it, a distinction so you made. And I want to underscore that you started to talk about the way that we felt. Well, it was when we were aware of that sense, we started to talk about how we felt. And so the idea that we can telecommunicate with our friends, like you were trying to express, that that was what we needed to perfect. We needed to get beyond our physical senses. And once we could break free of that, then the communication and the things that you're talking about is connecting with everybody else. We got that when we finally got in touch with the sixth sense, that field of energy, when we understood what that was and our aura and how it integrates with everybody else. Now we have a frame of reference where we can speak about that. And that is really the key for us to lift ourselves into other dimensions. Yeah. You know, Kim, Jim, finalize the control mechanisms that had influenced my life. You see, 
And it's interesting, you know, I, I ask so dearly and so, 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 so is sacred to me for other people from different parts of the galaxy to come down and to meet with me. I was so desperate to have that experience that I had it because it was the one thing I wanted most in life. And they gave it to me. There's no greater proof of the ultimate love and that divine power that comes with it. I don't think it's any big deal now. If uh, when we're in Arizona meeting with you and tribe is there, I believe very sincerely that if all of us form a giant circle and hold our hands and concentrate on one thought, we're going to make things happen. It's just like I said, a million humans, if we can all think the same thought at the same time of all weaponry made from a nuclear or radioactive device just disappearing into nothing, I believe we can do that. And I believe that these are the ultimate gifts that are coming to us, that once again, we are becoming Atlantis. And and the war, I see the world as being pure and beautiful, Lowell. I see crystal buildings and crystal pyramids everywhere. I see a, a, a renewal of all life and a rejoicing of all humanity that we love every life form on this planet and respect it. And we would never dream of polluting, never dream of hurting, never dream of any of these things that we used to do from our primeval past that was full of control. And the more I see this future Atlantean society for all of us, the more I think that it's real and we're actually coming into it. And this is part of the great awakening of all of humanity. Remember that I've always said that any of the gifts that I've ever had weren't special, like secret things. There are no secrets. And you can go onto any media platform today and say, see this thing, this is amazing headline secrets of the UFO universe or whatever. Like, well, none of it's secret. The truth is not secret, right? So right. it's just such a divine awakening. You know, we're out of the box. We're finally free. We've ascended and we're free. And it's like, God, you know, let's start using our mind. Let's hold hands in Arizona. Let's start changing the face of the earth right now. And for me, that comes with love. It has to be from my heart. And that's what controls my life and guides my life. And I, I am a complete willing participant in a, in a loving life filled with joy and tenderness. And it makes me feel so good to be alive when I exist within that beautiful light. And that's where I see all of us being. It isn't important who we gain access or knowledge from, because all you have to do is be that person. All you have to do is ask for that divine guidance, right? Right. Yeah. If I reflect on what Akashic records I've unlocked, um, you know, I'm not limited to just my own. And so when you say that we can be pretty much self-sufficient on higher knowledge that we didn't understand we had before, we can absolutely do that. We, <laughs> these incarnations we put ourselves through is a fight for us to see if by the end of the incarnation, you can remember who the heck you were. Well, look at how that's happening to more and more people this time around. There are lots of things that have changed. Technology certainly changed over the last hundred years, um, so much greater than what it had in the entire historic period before that. When you see that, we have the ingenuity to develop these things. Um, you don't have to wonder when you can really shift matter the way that they can with your intent uh, in the next dimension and manifest things quicker than we can in this physical realm. Man, it makes me really eager to see what's really going to happen soon. We're not talking about conditions that are somewhere off into the future. We are almost finished with the process moving from one dimension to the next. It's a solar cycle, a cosmic cycle that the earth is right. in. What a wonderful. And there's no God, stopping. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. And it's so fun to be here. It's like buying a ticket at the best theater for the best movie and being a participant in both the theater, your brother's next to you and, and the movie. It's like, Yep. Damn, it's a beautiful thing that we're coming into, and I'm so full of joy because of it. Don't worry about any of that crap. 
Don't worry about the hyperbole and any of the stuff. Don't worry about it. This doesn't matter what's going to happen because our tribe, our family right here, they've all re- they've ascended as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't yeah, be they get it. <laughs> right. They totally, how... they totally fucking get it. Exactly. This is cosmically historic. Earth has not gone from this physical plane to the next one ever. And we're here to be part of it and to contribute whatever resources we have to that effort. That's what we're doing here. That's why people like you and I, who to everybody else probably sounds ridiculous about the things that we talk about. We've achieved a higher level of what really is going on when they're just (laughs) stuck in their little mires. And so, you know, Uh, I hope the best for them that some, whatever awakening came my way comes theirs as well. But it's not stopping what is happening. That's so funny. I'm sorry. I just, you know what? I, 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 usually, <laughs> I usually never get soul boners from guys, but you just nailed it on that one. <laughs> well, oh, God, God uh, bless you. I love God that bless you. God bless you, Lowell. You're so wonderful. Uh, it well, is. It's a, it's a cosmic, uh, cosmic mm-hmm. consciousness explosion. And, the, and and it was funny, too, because while you were telling me that, I was thinking, well, what example can I give my brothers and sisters about my day? I would like to give an example about what I do just just real shortly. And it's, so today I got up and I couldn't wait to to take my dogs out for a walk. And they had a nice time. It was still twilight. Got down to the bakery. William was already here running his running his ass off and uh, just getting stuff done. So I got some laundry done and then I started um, looking at my garden because spring is here. And so I cleaned my bird bath and I sterilized and refilled my hummingbird feeder. And uh, I'm starting to look at orienting the garden towards a positive discharge of life. And so all the energy is going to go straight up and hit that beautiful dome of the field that all of us hold up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing today, guys. I'm going to fold my laundry when Lowell and I are done chatting. And then I'm going to finish working in the garden today for the whole day until sunset. And it's such a blessing. You had some breezy conditions there. And where I am in Arizona, it similar circumstances came through where there was like a stiff 40 to 50 mile an hour breeze that sustained itself for a while. Yeah, I. In fact, you jumped on my other channel and uh, left that comment. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah. fit. As, I'm, I'm fit as a fiddle. I can't believe how strong <laughs> I am, dude. Hey, listen, that last that last haul of uh, minerals, I found a huge pink kyanite crystal. It's gonna blow your mind. Wow, I love kyanite, yeah, but I've I just, never seen oh, it pink. Jesus, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's pink kyanite. It's gorgeous because it's transitional from kyanite into tourmaline. This thing got us some sort of amazing charge. I took it to the museum. It's been it's been documented as kyanite, and it was a very very rare find. So uh, that's Tuesday. You know, we're going back down Boulder for five miles to our gemstone you know, spot. We're gonna have to devote one of these to your mineralogy and your crystallogy. Um, that mindset because there's a lot of people that are attracted to them. Uh, I, and I'm certainly one of them. We're going to have to entertain that. Uh, I think it's one of the things that you and I hold dear and we haven't spent any time talking about with others. So uh, perhaps the next time we'll start to talk about that endeavor because clearly it's where your attention's being drawn. Oh, well, dude, uh, that's such a, that's so apropos and I'd love to do that because um, I part of the communication I received from the universe was that I don't have to listen to anything or follow anybody anymore. Just follow my heart and listen to God, listen to Gaia and just keep loving. And so then I was given a vision in a dream. As soon as I made that commitment to, to, to just follow my divine light. And then I would be more there for everybody. If I just followed my heart and lived within my heart. Then I got a vision in a dream of what's called the crystalline universe. I don't know if anyone knows about that or if it exists that's out there, 
but I was told that there's a crystalline universe. And then I was shot up into space and given this beautiful vision of like our planet with crystal buildings and crystal pyramids. But then our planet belonged to a whole other universe of living planets that were all part of this divine, like planets that are made out of aquamarine and planets that are made out of peridot and citrine that have life growing through all over the crystals. Trees like giant redwood trees sprouting out of crystals, beautiful green grasslands and valleys with crystals everywhere. And it was just such a beautiful vision that I'm I'm going to focus only on giving back to Gaia. Remember when you and I had Vivian on Star Chat, and she told us yes. how she went mm-hmm. she went back to all the sacred sites. And contacted the sacred ley lines. I mean, she's really an ambassador. She's out there doing it, and she's out of pocket. And she went to these ancient sacred sites, and she made the observation of spiritual people extracting spiritual goodness and and energy from the site, but not returning it. And so she spent all that time returning love energy and the power of awakening and the reconnection of all the sacred ley lines. And she was giving back. So now I have the opportunity when I am given the gifts of crystals and gemstones from Gaia, it gives me an opportunity to sit for a half an hour or more and put the palms of my hand on the cold, wet sand at twilight and tell her how much we love her. Yeah. Well, I can see a whole nother, at least one of these podcasts devoted to that topic because it's dear to me too. Maybe this will be a good spot to start your stop for today. Um, Yeah. No reason to drag it out. We will see you again here next week. Uh, But I had mentioned that um, shift watch this new little production will it's taken me a little bit more time to do than I thought because I had some uh, BES files I wanted to use and there was conversions that I didn't really calculate. Anyway, uh, I like the format. You'll be able to see it in a day or so. And I have one more piece of the puzzle I need to talk to Dave about to cap it all and finish it, but it's three to five minutes long. And anyway, You'll see the results soon, and then it's a format that you can begin to expect to see from me and others every week. So with that, we'll end this one and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Dave. Be be true to your school and be cool and full of love. And Lowell, always a pleasure to see you, brother. I wasn't sure that I was going to reach out and talk today or next week, or but just spirit moved me to talk about the crystalline universe and talk about love. And I sincerely believe that that ended. That's us, man. Peace.